I started at Adelaide Law School in 1977 and Adelaide was the only law school then. I spent a lot of my time uh, in, on other university activities, uh, mo mostly student politics actually. Um, uh, uh, I, I suppose I can say generally compared to the culture now is that it was not as studious. There were a handful of people who worked very hard but most of us worked um, on the basis that we did as little as possible. Chutes were regarded, definitely regarded as purely optional, uh, but we'd attend most lectures. We didn't have the um, facility of uh, having the lectures taped, of course, so you either had to go to the lectures or get a really good uh, uh, set of notes, which I understand is still the position today. Well, when I was at law school, the question was narrower. It was basically gay rights and gay issues that were the, the, the major issue then. Um, there wasn't much discussion of transgender uh, issues. Um, how was it viewed? Um, within the university, I think even then, there was a large section of the university in which it was um, simply accepted that the law had to change, that societal ad attitudes had to um, change. Um, but really in 1977, I suspect, was at about the beginning of um, organised campaigns uh, and calls for law reform. You've got to remember that the Sex Discrimination Act, I think, had been enacted in, in only about 1972. Uh, so we really saw the beginning of political organisation around, uh, and it was basically gay issues in 1977 when I started at the law school. No, in fact, I'm struggling to remember someone had come out at that time in the law school. In um, the arts courses, politics, uh, there were many students who had, but I can't just recall in the law school at the minute. Uh, for me, the increasing knowledge has been around transgender issues, and that's really only in the last decade or so that I've become uh, aware of just what that involves. Um, I think it has grown, and I think there is greater acceptance. In fact, I'm sure uh, there is. Um, and um, openly gay and transgender now more recently. Um, practitioners um, work and are accepted and um, no one thinks twice about it at all levels of the profession, um, uh, right through the uh, junior, senior ranks of the profession, the bar and the judiciary. So um, there certainly has been a growing acceptance. Um, I think that reflects the fact that the profession is increasingly merit-based. Uh, people expect results from their solicitors, people in commerce and business, um, and uh, they're after the best advice, um, irrespective of questions of race, gender or sexuality. And of course, in the courtroom, both for the barristers and judges, there's nowhere to hide. All that matters is the merit of your uh, legal knowledge and your application and diligence. And so necessarily I think that has meant that many minority groups uh, have been accepted and have uh, had advancement. Uh, the law was an oppressive instrument for decades in the 20th century and commencing in the 1970s though, we saw a change so that the law, which was an instrument of oppression, was actually used to advance uh, human rights. Um, I think it's terrific that the Law Reform Institute has, uh, is investigating um, the remaining uh, discriminatory aspects of the law against the uh, LGBTIQ community. Um, uh, and uh, in particular, as I understand it, they're looking at exemptions from the anti-discrimination provisions of legislation, exemptions which are largely based around personal or religious uh, beliefs. Uh, it's not the role of a judge to advocate for a particular social change. Um, um, the role, uh, what, what judges can contribute though, is information and knowledge from their combined um, judicial experience. Um, and they can um, help um, by establishing forums for discussion, by speaking publicly as I say, more to um, um, share their particular experiences, but also um, to explain the uh, essential 
values of the law and the rule of law which are based around um, rationality, um, uh, internationally accepted human um, uh, and internationally accepted human rights and personal autonomy. Uh, as a citizen, um, I have a responsibility to promote um, equality, respect for personal autonomy and human uh, rights. I think all good citizens um, have that. It's just that as a judge I'm constrained in the way I can do it publicly, um, obviously in personal uh, interactions, in choices I make um, uh, on a more personal level, who I might employ or engage as an associate for example, um, how I bring up my children, how I deal with uh, people in my personal and social life, that's, that's quite different and I think I, like all citizens, have a responsibility for that. There are still pockets of the profession that have what I might call a blokey culture and I first identified this and saw that it was still around at a time when um, uh, I, uh, Claire O'Connor and others spoke about the um, uh, discrimination against women, gender-based discrimination in the law. That blokey culture is a problem, especially I think in some law firms. Um, and um, again, I've not had any direct knowledge or information about how that affects, um, what the effect of the blokey culture is in terms of perpetuating discrimination based on sexuality, but I suspect that's um, uh, still um, an issue. But as I said, we have made many advances.